my name is Jane and I lead Derby Vineyard along with my husband Andrew. We're just uh, doing a series called Come Holy Spirit at the moment and I'm just recording the second one in that series which I did on Sunday so that if you missed it you can watch online. So the last time um, we spoke about who the Holy Spirit is, how he's a person, not an it, he's the third person of the Trinity, he's God, and how the book of Genesis describes him hovering over the waters and hovering over you and I, and, um, and about how important it is to wait on him. So today I want to talk about another essential ingredient, and that is faith. So I, I don't know if you've ever prayed for something and you absolutely knew it was going to happen and then it did. That's the gift of faith and it often precedes healings and miracles and it's a specific gift for a specific situation. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit that the Apostle Paul talks about in his letter to the church in Corinth in ancient Greece. So in um, 1 Corinthians it says... Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. And we'll talk about some of these gifts um, in this list over the, the coming weeks um, in this series. So when I first became a follower of Jesus, I was kind of under the impression that God, only, you only got one gift or maybe two if you were lucky and that God, you, that was your gift. And um, and actually, John Wimber, who led the Vineyard family of churches until 1997, taught that the gifts uh, were more like um, tools in a toolbox and available to any of us when we need them. And um, and my experience is, is over the years has kind of confirmed that. And also, it's because the gifts are not ours; they're not for us; they're for they're for others. But faith is, it's not, you may not have experienced faith like that. And uh, when I ask people to put their hands up as to who would experience that kind of faith for a miracle where they'd just known something was going to happen on Sunday, not that many of us raised our hand. And that's because faith is, it's more than a specific gift for a, a miracle at a specific time. It's it's uh, it's also an attitude, an expectation of God's goodness, which we see throughout the scripture and which Jesus talks to his followers about all the time. It's often an important ingredient in his miracles. And he often says to people, your faith made you well. Uh, there's an example in Matthew's Gospel, chapter nine, where Jesus heals a sick woman, the woman who'd been subject to bleeding. Uh, yes, Matthew, Matthew 9 verse 20. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw, saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. What about the times when we don't, we really don't have that supernatural gift of faith when we pray for someone or maybe we don't even really think anything's going to happen at all, um, let alone know. Does that matter? And when in those situations, uh, I always think about Jesus's teaching on the mustard seed, the parable of the mustard seed. And in Matthew chapter 17, it says... He, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And I've often not 
not believed God was going to do something when I've prayed for someone and then they have. Um, just before the pandemic, I was talking to one of the school dads and uh, he told me that he'd had pain in his knee for ages. He was talking about so many different ailments, but he, you know, his his knee was had been really, um, really shot for years. And uh, he talked about it so much. I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm going to have to pray for him. And um, without particularly any expectation, but I'd seen stuff happen before, thought, well, you never know. So I prayed for his knee and he felt he felt something happen at the time, but he wasn't sure what. And a few days later, I was walking to school and he 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 shouted across the road, um, Jane, I need to speak to you. And I thought, oh, I know what's going on here. And um, later in the day, he told me that his knee felt completely better. And he said it, he felt like um, someone had poured anaesthetic into his knee. And and that went uh, that that lasted for I don't know how long, a long time. He 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 didn't have the the pain in his knee that he'd had before. And he he really he had no belief in God whatsoever and really had no idea what to make of it. It really, really messed with his head. And he said that he wanted to see another miracle or another healing take place before he would actually believe in God. But um, that was his choice. But if, yeah, if he if he saw something else like that, then he would absolutely go to church and start um, thinking seriously about this. But yeah, um, I didn't particularly know that God was going to do something, but I think that when when you or I offer to pray for somebody, I think that he sees the obedience, that that the obedience is enough of just offering that mustard seed faith that God might do something, um, enough to actually offer to pray. Um, sometimes that's, I think that that's actually enough faith for him because really it's not, it's not our faith that's doing it really it's the it's God who does it um and it's it's the person that we have the faith in so faith is also a muscle and we can help it to grow God can use that faith the size of a mustard seed or God just might do something but not really expecting very much and the scripture indicates that faith is something that is meant to grow in 2 Thessalonians 1, so Paul's lesser, uh, letter to the church in Thessalonica, he says, We ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. So God wants our faith to grow because it's how we're created to live with a, a positive expectation and a trust in God's goodness to us. And when you when we step out and and obey God with that faith the size of a mustard seed, it grows. So just some practical steps, because I don't like to just talk and 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 it's all theory and no practical, no kind of how-tos. These were just a, a few of my uh, simple ideas. And the first one is just that faith is spelt R-I-S-K. And uh, this is quoting John Wimber again. Um, when we when we step out in obedience and take risks, we step out, we push outside of our comfort zone, our faith grows. When you share a word with somebody at church, even though you're not sure if it's right, um, but then they respond to it and it blesses them or it, it speaks to them. Or when you pray for someone without even expecting something to happen and then it does. Or when you invite someone to church without really expecting them to say yes and they show up, your faith and your expectation grow. And the second thing is just share our stories. We need to hear each other's stories. Um, we need to hear them on Sundays. We in, in we need to share stories with one another in small groups or when we're having a cup of tea. I'd love it if you'd send me. Maybe you weren't there last Sunday, but. You know, you have a, a story about um, how you how you stepped outside of your comfort zone and your faith grew or something else to do with this. And um, just I, I love to hear those stories about how God is working in your life or working through you. Or even just if you you don't sense that, but you have questions, um, just love to get your emails if you want to send them in. 
the third step is to encourage one another so um yeah and i guess that's that's similar to the share our stories but you know just gathering together on a sunday encourages us and um and in small groups my um we have like midweek small groups in our church that are like the building blocks of the church that's where we really get to know people because it's not sundays and we found sunday meetings not the best place to do that but it's in those smaller groupings midweek like maybe on a wednesday night or a thursday night where we pray for each other and um read the bible together or just have food and my journey with um faith for healing and really kind of taking more risks um got its kickstart in small group I, I had been part of a vineyard church for years. Andrew and I were part of um, Birmingham Vineyard and um, for years and on staff and we'd, we'd done loads there and we'd, we'd seen healings and, um, and especially in the schools ministry that we were leading um, with the kids. But um, I wouldn't say that it was something that happened like every day. It wasn't regular and things began to kind of shift for me when I first heard this guy called Robbie Dawkins speak at the National Leaders Conference a few years ago and it just um he was kind of a you know a very loud confident seeming American guy and um so a very different person to me but the thing that um the thing that really struck me about him was he would just pray for anything that moved and I came away convinced that I was called to be a, a like a, a female British version of Robbie Dawkins, not in terms of having a um, a travelling ministry, but that um, that expectation that God could move at any time, and you know, just being willing to pray for anybody. Um, but doubt crept in, and uh, I began to believe. You know, I I, sat, I kind of rationalised it, and and I started to think, oh, that's just for people like Charlie in our church, uh, Charlie in our church was, uh, um, and is always doing that sort of thing. And, um, but it, you know, it wasn't for me. I could only do that as part of, you know, a, a group of people doing some kind of structured thing, like the school's ministry, like doing it with the kids or whatever. It was kind of, I was comfortable with that. It was less risky. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I heard Rob, Robbie Dawkins again uh, a couple of years later and the same thing happened. And, um, you know, I, I sort of got all inspired and then went away and just started rationalising it away. <laughs> thinking, well, it's not really me. And and then we, Andrew and I had, after, at some time after we planted Derby Vineyard and we got up to about, maybe we had three small groups, something like that. And um, we had a small group for a while that had a lot of people in it who had different health issues and there was a lady in the group who had um who hadn't come to faith yet she was just kind of getting to know Jesus and she um she had a lot of health issues so every time that we would pray for each other which was every week we'd end up praying for health stuff and um we were able to kind of practice some of the principles that that we'd learned from Robbie Dawkins and that were actually in the Bible all along, like things like um, praying prayers of command, like so shoulder be healed and that kind of thing, rather than sort of begging God to do it. Because we were learning about uh, our authority and how Jesus delegates his authority to us. And we began to see healings or at least partial healings every week. And it just kind of became regular like we would almost we almost began to expect something to happen when we prayed for someone to be healed and I had a friend who didn't go to church who had had back pain for years and I'd never prayed for her and I had always made excuses like um like I, I, I'm trying to be sensitive and I sensed that something about church made her feel uncomfortable so I would just think, oh, I can't offer to pray for her because it will put her off. Or what if something doesn't happen? Uh, but basically, it was, if I'm honest, it was fear. And fear, not doubt, is the opposite of faith. And one day we were walking back to our house and she was going to look after my little girl while I worked. 
and I could see that she was struggling to walk and clearly in pain. And I thought, we're just seeing God heal in small group every single week. And I can't even offer. And it seemed morally wrong. So we got back to the house and I asked if I could pray for her. And I just put my hand on her back and uh, she said yes. And I put my hand on her back and uh, just prayed for a moment. Just said, come Holy Spirit, back be healed. Something really simple like that. I waited for a few seconds. And then I said, just asked her, if you know, if your pain was a 10 when we started praying, what is it now? And she's, she looked really shocked and said, a six? And then uh, we prayed again, and I think it might have gone to a five or a four or something like that. But then, and then I prayed again, and then, and then it, it, there was no change. Um, but I, I said we had a lovely conversation about God and healing and all that kind of thing, and I was telling her everything that was happening in small group, and um, I said that I'd continue to pray for her, and I even got a couple of um, friends from church to keep to pray for her as well. And the next day she came running up to me in the school playground when I'd gone to pick up my, my kids. And she said, thank you so much for praying for me. My pain is now gone. And a few weeks later, I was giving her a lift home. Um, and she just said, I pray about everything now because prayer works. And after that, um, that was just super encouraging and after that I, I kind of went on a journey of praying for others outside of the church um, especially in the school playground and I've seen God heal people in strange places loads of times. One thing that I've noticed during the pandemic is that I've backed off from doing that kind of thing so much because oh it was it was so awkward with social distancing you couldn't exactly go and lay a hand on somebody when you're supposed to be two metres apart and um, you know then there was the lockdowns and it seems as though the whole world has been discipled into fear over the past three years and also Andrew and I have had major things going on in our lives we haven't been able to lead a small group for a long time and we were just a uh, we'd been feeling like as over the past few months that maybe we were just about getting to a place where we could possibly start one um like a midweek group and as well as every doing everything else and we um we were wanting to do that initially just to help new people at church just to connect with each other and 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 people that have been coming for ages to connect with others again and include new people at church but now, as you know, as I've been, as I write this talk and the first time that I did the talk, I realised that I need the small group for me. Because when God moves in small group and when we um, practice um, praying for each other, because that's almost like how I see it now sometimes a little bit when we pray for each other at church or small group. It's that's important in itself, but it's also incredible practice for praying for other people who don't know God, you know, and outside of um, gathered environments. So when God moves in small group and he answers prayers and we pray for one another, it increases my faith and my expectation. And I'm more likely to step out and take risks because I've done it before loads of times and sometimes I've seen God do stuff. And we want to create more environments in, in church where we can grow our faith together, encourage one another, share our stories and practice doing stuff that Jesus did so that we can take that out to a suffering world that's dying for some hope or some, some actual good news because there's so much bad news all the time. So if you feel like God may have been talking to you about small group, just get in touch with us. We'd love to point you in the right direction. And ours, uh, Andrew and I are starting one, sometimes online on Zoom and sometimes in person at our house next Wednesday, Wednesday the 22nd of Feb. Just get in touch if you want to know more and uh, we'd love to talk to you about it. And um, I'll just finish by just praying a quick prayer for you. It's a bit difficult to do kind of wait on the Holy Spirit the way that we do at a service on a Sunday. Um, 
online but I would like to just take a minute just to um, pray for you um, today. So come Holy Spirit, we just, um, I just welcome you and whoever's watching this, I just speak blessing on you in Jesus name. I have a sense there might be someone watching this with pain in their body. If you have pain in your body, I want to just speak healing to that pain, tell that pain to go in Jesus name. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. God just wants you to know that he loves you, that he is hovering over you, that he has plans for your life. He has good plans. Just come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.